Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, October 10th, 2016. Here are our top stories. Tonight, the fallout of last night's debate re-energizes the Trump train as Hillary is forced to dodge questions about her criminal past and her husband's lifetime pattern of sexual abuse. Meanwhile, an army of info warriors continue to spread the message of rape. And this time, it's Hillary Clinton who gets triggered. And she responds by inciting violence during a low attendance rally in Detroit. I do hope somebody follows that gentleman out and stages an intervention. He clearly has not been following this election very closely. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, another day and another Bill Clinton rape t-shirt protester at a Hillary Clinton rally. It's interesting how Hillary Clinton handled this today. She suggested that people follow the man out of the uh, auditorium there where they were having the event. Follow him out and do an intervention. Hmm, what does that mean? Do an intervention. I do hope somebody follows that gentleman out and stages an intervention. She wouldn't be inciting violence against him, would she? Well, I don't know. She says, clearly he hasn't been following this election very closely. No, he knows exactly what you're about, Hillary. And later on the program, we have an interview with the man who went to the Tim Kaine rally and trolled Tim Kaine. This man was a Democrat delegate to a convention 20 years ago. And what he saw there with Bill and Hillary Clinton uh, basically was so disillusioning to him as to the way the, the double standards that Hillary Clinton had. You know, the public face and the private face that she talks about? That private face is pretty nasty. And he saw some pretty nasty assaults from Bill Clinton. So he's going to be coming up uh, later in the program. We're going to have an interview with him. But really, it was uh, Trump last night who really got into Hillary Clinton's face. What he did to her was even more amazing than if he had opened up his shirt and had a Bill Clinton as a rapist. No, he took her down. They came after him time and time again for the emails, uh, for the videotape that was released to cover up for the Podesta emails that came out. The Podesta emails were very substantive on issues. They really defined the Clintons. And it was imperative that they have their Bush connection uh, put this out uh, and, and tried to take the public's attention off of it. It was very effective. And they came after him time and again in the debate. And Trump came back and said, well, it was simply locker talk. I'm not proud of it. I'm a person who has great respect for people, for my family, for the people of this country. I'm certainly not proud of it. But if you look at Bill Clinton, far worse. Mine was words. His was action, which is what Juanita Broderick said. He said Bill Clinton is abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women, attacked them viciously. Four of them here tonight. One of the women who is a wonderful woman at 12 years old was raped at 12. And he talks about how Hillary Clinton uh, got her off, talked about how Bill Clinton was impeached. He lost his license to practice law. He had to pay an $850,000 fine to Paula Jones because of sexual assault, not because he had an affair. And oh, by the way, uh, as bad as it was what uh, Donald Trump said, he said uh, he tried to make a move on her and she shut it down. He didn't rape her. See, Bill doesn't take no for an answer. But then he goes on. And this is where he really took over the debate. He had had it at this point. They kept coming after him over and over again. He says, when we talk about an apology, I think the one you should really be apologizing for, the thing you should be apologizing for are the 33,000 emails that you deleted that you acid washed and the two boxes of emails and other things last week that were taken from an office that are now missing. I tell you what, I didn't think I would say this, but I'm going to say it. And I hate to say it. But I'm going to put you in jail if I become president, essentially, is what he had to say. And then Hillary Clinton's only response, she was really taken back by that. Her only response was to say, ah, I can't fact check that. I can't respond to that. I, got, I can't fact Just go to my website and we explain all of this away. All of the emails that we deleted, all the emails that we hid, that we uh, obstructed justice on, all the multiple felonies that I committed, we explain that all away at HillaryClinton.com. And she said, you know, it's just awfully good that... Someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of our country. And Trump said, because you would be in jail. And that's the way it went the rest of the night. And it was so bad The CNN and others started talking about how he was um, lur uh, lurking over her, how he was intimidating her with her body language. 
And Kellyanne Conway, campaign manager for Donald Trump, tweeted out how you know Donald Trump won the debate. One, you watched it. And number two, Hillary and the media spend will be about him standing behind her. Yes, the New York Times said this looks like a poster for a 1970s horror movie. That was the uh, Times culture writer Dave Iskos in response to the photo of Trump standing behind Clinton and frowning. Interestingly enough, even CNN walked this back a bit. They had a body language expert on there, and she explained, look, you got this set up in the round, and when Hillary Clinton turns over to the left and starts talking to somebody and Bill Clinton is standing over here, then it looks like he's lurking behind her. I mean, it's simply camera angles. But it was also good, and you can see the body language as, a two, as he's free to move around, not limited to being sitting in a chair or being behind a podium. Uh, at, but she points out, the body language expert points out, that she thought that uh, Hillary Clinton was trying to intimidate Donald Trump, saying that when he, she would move in front of him, he would not interrupt her, would not do anything with that. So it was going both ways, but clearly it was Donald Trump who prevailed last night. It was so bad that we see people like, former Face the Nation host Bob Schieffer saying the debate was disgraceful. No, it was Bob Schieffer's comments that were disgraceful. Listen to what he had to say, how he spun the issue of the women. They wanted to make this about women. They wanted to throw this uh, bombshell out there to distract people as a red herring away from the Podesta emails that were leaked. So they start talking about a comment that Donald Trump made 10 years ago. He responded by bringing in several of the women that have accused Bill Clinton of rape. But Bob Schieffer supposedly doesn't understand any of this. He says, what are we doing, he said. We're marching in women who are supposed to have some relationship with one of the candidate's spouses? What's that supposed to prove? Well, Bob, in case you weren't paying attention 20 years ago, these were women that Bill Clinton raped, that Hillary Clinton covered up for. They didn't have a consensual relationship. And uh, it shouldn't be any kind of mystic thing to you, Bob. You know perfectly well what's going on with it, and so does Geraldo Rivera. Coming out the day after these other tapes saying, I've got some too. I'm going to throw out some tapes to embarrass Donald Trump. Juanita Broderick came after him because of the way that he responded to the accusations against Roger Ailes, defending him initially, and then coming back and apologizing to women and saying, well, you know, now that we know more about what was going on, I shouldn't have defended Roger Ailes. Juanita Broderick said it's a bit too late for that. She said, you said on Fox News that when my name, Juanita Broderick, came up, a victim of Bill Clinton, that it, quote, made you want to throw up in your mouth. That's Geraldo Rivero. See, he doesn't have a problem with Bill Clinton raping Juanita Broderick. As a matter of fact, if you even talk about that, it makes Geraldo Rivero want to puke. But Geraldo Rivero is going to go through his archives and try to find anything he can to embarrass Donald Trump. Let me tell you what this is about. This isn't about even Geraldo Rivera trying to save face with women. Geraldo Rivera hates the idea that we're going to get control of our borders. And somebody else hates that idea too. Mr. Open Borders himself, Paul Ryan. All these phony Republicans like Paul Ryan, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, Jeb Bush, Okay, all these people who say that all the Bushes, oh, yeah, we support him at some point in time. You know, this is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger pretending that he had endorsed or supported Donald Trump at some point in time. These are people who are all part of the globalist agenda. These are the people at the top, the Republicans who are no different from the Democrats. They marry the Democrats. They party with the Democrats. They call the Democrats their brothers, their cousins. They leak information on behalf of Hillary Clinton, as the Bushes did. They do this, as uh, George H.W. Bush did when Donald Trump is speaking. No, these people are all part of the same team. Paul Ryan is one of those two. Paul Ryan is now saying, I will not defend or campaign with Donald Trump. Good, good. We want to know who you are. And it's a shame that he won the primary. Hopefully he won't win re-election. Somebody needs to uh, make sure that he, of course, it's a very protected uh, district that he has, or he will absolutely win the election. But Donald Trump came out and said, Paul Ryan should spend more time balancing the budget. In other words, do your job, Paul Ryan. You've given carte blanche to Obama. You passed uh, that continuation bill. You completely funded the climate change treaty just a couple of days after it was passed. You had nothing to do with Obamacare. You have greased the skids for these transatlantic, trans-Pacific partnerships, which are nothing but corporate 
global governance. You've shut down the constitutional process for approving treaties. You should be doing your job, Paul Ryan. You are the person, more than anybody else, that's responsible for an outsider taking over the Republican Party because you wouldn't do your job. You continually deceived and lied to the GOP voters, saying you're going to do one thing and then governing as a Democrat. You're nothing but a rhino, Paul Rhino. This is one of the key issues, of course, of Paul Ryan, and that is the border issue. As uh, Drudge reported today on the Drudge Report, we got an article from LifeZet. Border crisis, illegal crossings may be far higher than the official number. Oh, you think so? Absolutely they are. Remember, the Border Patrol has endorsed Donald Trump. First time they've ever done that, uh, is endorsing a presidential candidate. And now a new Department of Homeland Security study revises and lowers the estimated success rate in stopping illegal immigrants crossing the southern border. They previously said, oh, we think we're getting 81% of them. Now they say, oh, we think we're only getting 54% of them. Hey, <laughs> they have no idea how many people are coming across the border reliably. They do know how many people they're setting free, but they don't know how many people they failed to stop by definition. And this is the key thing that they have tried to keep you from seeing. This is why they didn't want you to see the Podesta emails. This is why uh, the Bush uh, family member who used to work for NBC, he's now been suspended by the Today Show. This is why he leaked this stuff and did it against his own uh, his own network, NBC. That's why they suspended him. It was imperative for the Bushes to get out there and cover for the Clintons because they didn't want you to see this kind of stuff. Hillary Clinton, three years ago, saying to the Jewish United Fund of Metropolitan Chicago, these are the private transcripts and things that have been leaked out by WikiLeaks. They can't possibly, she told uh, the people, Jordan was threatened by the immigrants, the refugees who were coming out of Syria. Three years ago, she said this. She said, Jordan is threatened because they can't possibly vet all those refugees. So they don't know if, you know, jihadists are coming in along with the legitimate refugees. But if you say that, if Donald Trump says that, uh, you know, if you say it, you're part of the basket of deplorables, you're a xenophobe, you're a racist, okay? You don't like, uh, you're Islamophobe because you're saying that we don't know who these people are that are coming in. We have no way to vet them. Hillary Clinton said that about Syria three years ago. Nothing has changed. You don't know who these people are that are coming in. There is absolutely no way that they can vet these people. And she lied to the American public again yesterday saying we're not going to let anybody in that's a threat. You don't know if they're a threat. And now we have the German government coming in and saying, well, we, you know, we let in 500,000 people and, and uh, that, that said they were refugees, but we think we may have let in about 500 jihadis. They don't know. They just pulled out a convenient figure. They thought, well, maybe only about one-tenth of one percent, maybe 99.9% .9 of them are legit. But maybe there's like 0.1% of them that aren't. And that works out to 500 jihadis. Think about what the, the, the tragedy that we've seen committed by just one of these people in one of these attacks. And they've got 500 that they've let in that they're estimating. And they, again, they have no idea how many people that they have let in. She went on to say she can't use the word Islamic terrorists. She doesn't want to talk about Islamic extremists. But again, in that same meeting uh, on, in 2013, she said the Saudis, you know, her campaign supporters, the people who bragged about the fact that they'd given her $25 million and then took that down after they got uh, not uh, after it got noticed. She said the Saudis oppose the mother Muslim Brotherhood. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Because, you know, Huma Abedin, uh, her mother was one of the founders of the Muslim Brotherhood. And, of course, Hillary has been to Saudi Arabia to the uh, female madrasa uh, addressing the students there of Huma Abedin's mother where they, you know, teach them to live with uh, their faces covered under burqas, under religious oppression that they have in Saudi Arabia. The religious police, you know, can you imagine? Religious police in America? That's going to happen. It'll happen once they get to a certain critical mass. We already see areas of America. There was a, a town in Pennsylvania, Allentown. They have now about 50% of the town itself is Hispanic, and they're going through and changing the signs to Spanish. And one of the people that was there who has a business, who is Hispanic himself, said, seriously, is this the best you can do? 
You don't have any other issues that you can cover. But understand that when people come in in sufficient numbers that they do not want to assimilate, they will change your culture. They will change your religion. They will change the system that we operate under. They will get rid of the First Amendment. They will do the types of things that Sharia Khan, the man that Hillary Clinton keeps putting up as a poster child for Donald Trump's intolerance, that man is pushing Sharia law, which is a repudiation of the First Amendment and everything that America has stood for. But Hillary Clinton says, well, the Saudis oppose the mother Muslim Brotherhood, which is kind of ironic, she said, since the Saudis have exported more extreme ideology than any other place on earth over the last 30 years. Yes, and Hillary, you helped them do that. And you helped to set the Middle East on fire, overthrowing Libya, overthrowing Syria. And now you want to set America on fire. You want to bring in the people that you have absolutely no way of vetting. And at the same time, we see in some of these other emails, she's talking about the fact that she wants to enact gun control by executive order. And it was interesting that she said the Today Show has indicated that they definitely plan to ask about guns. See, here's the coordination going back and forth between the media and Hillary Clinton. So we're going to background reporters tonight on specific protocols that we're going to do. Universal background checks by executive order and manufacturer's liability in violation of the Second Amendment, in violation of the laws passed by Congress that said if all they did was manufacture guns, there is no liability involved in that. Coming up, we're going to have the man who went to the Kane rally, the man who was a committed Democrat activist and totally disillusioned by what he saw with the Clintons 20 years ago. We'll be right back. In light of this week's debate, I think it's fair to say that the gloves are off. If you're going to come after Trump's character, be expected to get hit back with a one-two punch. That's exactly what happened. So, of course, we are now seeing the establishment media working overtime to turn this into how sexist Trump is. They're already rolling out there. It's super sexist to blame Hillary for Bill's indiscretions hot takes. They're already now making the case that Donald Trump was sexist for using female pronouns in reference to Hillary Clinton. I don't think she goes by any other pronouns other than she and her. Uh, they also claim that Trump was lurking behind her and totally in her space like any man would be. And they're actually making the, the case that him lurking behind her was an indicator of pre-assault, that he was actually about to assault Hillary Clinton for lurking behind her. So I can't deny that, that take on this because Trump indeed beat her down in the debate, you know, metaphorically speaking. Um, but it wasn't because of the freaking patriarchy, you morons. This was because they were in a circular setup. It was a 360 degree angles on the camera. So depending on which shot they went with, yeah, it did look like he was towering behind her. The guy's six foot three. He was, uh, you know, could appear like he was circling her like a shark does his prey. But let's go back to Bill's indiscretions. So, indeed, if it was just a few affairs, you know, whatever, a lot of couples have had to deal with infidelity. Hillary Clinton and her husband, that's a private thing between them. They seem to have worked it out. They obviously have some type of agreement. No big deal. But that's not the problem. The problem is when you know that your husband is a serial predator and you lie about it, you help him cover it up, you lie directly to the media and the American people and you enable his behavior and smear the victims, intimidate the victims both publicly and privately for decades all in your own personal pursuit of power. That is a problem. Now, I already had someone on Twitter say, you know, this was already litigated in the 90s. We got over it, and we still elected her to the Senate, and now she's going to be the president. No big deal. Well, the deal is that the focus back then was always on Bill Clinton's consensual sexual acts. Hence the Monica Lewinsky scandal. It became all about Monica Lewinsky and the consensual acts between two consenting adults. But the multiple victims of Bill Clinton were never taken seriously. They were always charged as bimbos um, and tramps. They were demonized uh, many, many decades ago, but still even now, just today, on The View, the Joy, uh, Joy Bayar actually called Bill Clinton's rape victims tramps. And all the liberals in their audience just 
went into uproarious laughter over this because this is so funny. This is a female centric show, The View. It's got an all female panel, and they're putting it out there that it's okay to call these women who have been victims of sexual assault tramps, just like they were the bimbo eruptions so many decades ago. Um, so this is the stunning hypocrisy of the left, who is always trying to push out this rape culture and how we need to do something about Donald Trump and his lewd comments. It's just furthering this sexual assault, this predatory behavior. But then they're going to excuse Bill Clinton. He's the untouchable. Um, this is this is hypocrisy because they're constantly, even back then, they're like, oh, it's just Bill being a man, just being a guy. He's such a Lothario. Well, as a few of Bill's victims explained to Breitbart News, they were not willing participants. It's uh, not his indiscretions I mean, at all. This is this not is, okay. We didn't agree to do this stuff. He yeah, this is criminal. We yeah. were not willing to the acts that he performed. Absolutely We were not, not willing participants. These were crimes. Hey, criminal, criminal stuff here. So these are not infidelities. No. It's a rape is not an infidelity. These are crimes any other people would be in jail. This is about a serial rapist, a predator, and his wife who has enabled his behavior yes. all of these Amen. years. She's taken personal betrayals and turn them into political opportunities. And according to the latest WikiLeaks email dump, there are some people in Clinton's campaign, insiders that are petrified that Bill Clinton's sordid sexual past could severely damage Hillary's chances. So this is an email marked confidential. It was sent to Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta by a prominent left-wing journalist, Brent Budowski. It includes details of Budowski's exchange with someone in the media who told him that there are people that are close to the Clinton who say that Bill Clinton's sex life could be damaging to her. Now, Budowski stresses he thinks the more Bill Clinton, the better for Hillary, uh, Hillary and her campaign. But he says that there are people who are purportedly close to the Clintons pushing the line that the less Bill, the better. So something else that I find really interesting is that it's so hard for so many people to see Bill Clinton as a sexual predator. Yet when it comes to, you know, frat boys like Brock Turner or John Enoch who get off with just a slap on the wrist because they're these privileged rich kids with a bright future ahead of them, people are enraged. It's not hard for them to see how something like that could happen. Yet it's these very frat boys who end up getting to become the future president. They're, they become the Bill Clintons. They're in the Oval Office abusing their power. Evil people get old, too. Hillary Clinton is not just a sweet little old grandma. She's done some dirt in her past as well. Now, I understand that it's not Hillary Clinton's fault. She married a philanderer. She chose to stay with him. That's not the issue. The issue is that she repeatedly blamed these victims uh, publicly and privately for years. She lied about her husband's behavior. She enabled him to move on to new victims and yet she wants to put herself out there as this champion for women's rights. So these are victims of course that included uh, women who worked for Bill at when he was governor as well as when he was in the White House. So we don't want him anywhere near the Oval Office once again to abuse his power there. Now with Hillary claiming to be this champion of women, she even ironically went out and said that victims of sexual assault deserve to be believed. I'm with her. This is a woman who aggressively defended a child rapist in 1975. She personally attacked the character of this 12-year-old girl and her mental state. This was 12-year-old Kathy Shelton. Now, Clinton wrote in an affidavit at the time that Shelton should have undergone a psychiatric examination. She talked about the girl being emotionally unstable with a tendency to seek out older men and to engage in fantasizing. She also said the girl made false accusations about people claiming that they had attacked her body. So this was a 12-year-old girl, a virgin at the time, who was raped and beaten so badly that she had to have surgery after she woke up from a coma.
And this was someone that Hillary demonized back then when she was 12 years old. She made her the problem. She gets this guy off. He gets about a year in prison on a technicality. Hillary Clinton knew that he was guilty. And that's why years later she laughed about the fact that this case made her forevermore never trust polygraphs again. So this is the type of woman that Hillary Clinton is. Hillary, who wants every victim, every survivor of sexual assault to know that you have the right to be heard. You have the right to be believed. We're with you. She's a total hypocrite. Uh, she's gone from defending a child rapist to enabling a sexual predator for decades to flip-flopping on the TPP and open borders and open trade. This is the moral compass of Hillary Clinton. She has none, and she will say and do whatever it takes to gain an advantage. And this is why Bill Clinton's sordid sexual history matters to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Donald Trump coordinated another sneak attack against the mainstream media today as he tricked them into covering a press conference before the debate. And the subject matter is something that the establishment media has been refusing to talk about for a long time. They were told that they were being taken to the Four Seasons Hotel here in St. Louis for what was supposed to be a photo op of Donald Trump debate prepping. Instead, they got what you just showed us, so these four women standing or sitting uh, with Mr. Trump there, uh, Paula Jones, Kathy Shelton, Juanita Broderick, and Kathleen Willey. Donald Trump met with several women who've accused former President Bill Clinton of rape. And they are wondering why the mainstream media isn't asking Hillary Clinton the tough questions, like why does Hillary blame her husband's victims and then destroy their lives and reputations? I tweeted recently, and Mr. Trump retweeted it, that actions speak louder than words. Mr. Trump may have said some bad words, but Bill Clinton raped me and Hillary Clinton threatened me. I don't think there's any comparison. As soon as the reporters realized that they were tricked into covering a press conference about Bill Clinton's rape allegations, they immediately went into defense mode and they tried to deflect the conversation back to Donald Trump. Why did you say you touched me without consent, Mr. Trump? Why don't y'all ask Bill Clinton that? Why don't y'all go ask Bill Clinton that? Go ahead and ask Hillary as well. <laughs> now, moments later, right after this press conference, Donald Trump got up, walked out, and went straight to the debate. And guess who went with him? That's right. Right there in the audience were Bill Clinton's rape accusers. And then the gloves came off. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. So you can say any way you want to say it, but Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously, four of them here tonight. One of the women, who is a wonderful woman at 12 years old, was raped at 12. Her client... She represented, got him off, and she's seen laughing on two separate occasions, laughing at the girl who was raped. Kathy Shelton, that young woman, is here with us tonight. So don't tell me about words. I am absolutely, I apologize for those words. But it is things that people say. But what President Clinton did, he was impeached. He lost his license to practice law. He had to pay an $850,000 fine to one of the women, Paula Jones, who's also here tonight. And I will tell you that when Hillary brings up a point like that, and she talks about words that I said 11 years ago, I think it's disgraceful, and I think she should be ashamed of herself, if you want to know the truth. And now the whole world finally knows about Bill and Hillary Clinton's Lifetime pattern of abuse towards women. Thank you, Donald Trump.
Yeah, that's her, with the gold. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the I can do anything. This latest controversy marks a divide when those who are aware of the CIA-controlled media protecting the interests of the multinational corporate elite's pawn, Hillary Clinton, react in disgust, and the disgust from those who still think that reality is as it seems. Are we going to hold that to Hillary Clinton, to the things when she apologized? Oh, wait a minute. She never really apologized for insulting the yeah, Yes, if she, if she was, if Hillary... What did you do the day you saw the tape mm -hmm. of this man boasting about grabbing exactly. a woman's... That's Period. Okay. All right. Well, Will you please stop saying that word? My daughter is listening. Yeah, you know what, Scotty? You know what, Scotty? You know what, Scotty? Don't tell me you're offended when I say... You're not offended when Donald Trump says exactly. I'm not running for president. He on is. This. If only they could just open their eyes for a moment, they would actually see that totalitarianism is warping that accepted reality. George Orwell described totalitarianism as such, a society living by and for continuous warfare in which the ruling caste have ceased to have any real function but succeed in clinging to power through force and fraud. Hillary Clinton is just the latest villain from a long line of mind-controlling ne'er-do-wells that have ruled over the United States since it was inevitably infiltrated by the global elite central bank scam in 1913 systematically kept in line by methods of manufactured terror. Building 7, I often hear about. No plane hit Building 7. Why did Building 7 come down? What do you tell people? What is Building 7? Building 7. I have no idea. I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and assassination of the United States' greatest leaders by a shadow government that pretends to misplace trillions of taxpayer dollars only to fund its Luciferian class war domination over humanity. More money for the Pentagon when its own auditors admit the military cannot account for 25% of what it already spends. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. $2.3 trillion with a T. That's $8,000 for every man, woman, and child in America. To understand how the Pentagon can lose track of trillions, consider the case of one military accountant who tried to find out what happened to a mere 300 million. We know it's gone, but we don't know what they spent it on. What Trump said amounts to nothing. Nothing compared to her husband's rape victims, some of them brutally raped, only to be attacked publicly by Hillary after the deed was done. She grabbed a hold of my arm and my hand, and she pulls me into her, and she says with this very angry look on her face, which had been so pleasant seconds before, and in a low voice says, do you understand everything you do? And that frightened me. I felt like she knew. And that she he was, ripped you. Yes, and that she was telling me to keep quiet. Nothing compared to the savagery Middle Eastern women endure, and Hillary ignores only to push the divide and conquer refugee invasion narrative, a fiction that will eventually lead to the rape of thousands of unsuspecting American women and children. Nothing compared to the bodies hidden along Hillary's path to power. Nothing compared to the thousands that have died in the name of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's rape of Northern Africa due to the conquest of rich men's wars, perpetual wars fought in the perceived name of freedom and democracy, only benefiting the wealthy that become wealthier by playing both sides, maiming and killing our brave fighting men and women in the process. In fact, what Trump said should actually strengthen your resolve. You see, 11 years ago when Trump said this, he wasn't a politician. He wasn't being groomed and compromised like CIA plant Hillary has been her entire political life. He was just a guy, like so many other guys, just making a joke. If you want to see a sexual predator, take the blinders off and look no further than Hillary's right-hand man. And I'm not referring to the genderless Illuminati sellout, Tim Kaine. John Bound for InfoWars.com. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action.
his words, what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously. Four of them are here tonight. So much of what he's just said is not right, but he gets to run his campaign any way he chooses. <laughs> Well, you've seen the video of the man who crashed the Tim Kaine event with the Bill Clinton is a rapist t-shirt. He has an interesting history because Richard Garrett was a Democrat activist before he was disillusioned with what he saw with Bill Clinton. Joining us now is Richard Garrett. Welcome, Richard. Uh, I'm very impressed with what you did, and thank you for doing that because uh, I could see the passion uh, that you had when you uh, got there with uh, Tim Kaine. <laughs> it was a, an amazing uh, video. But it stems from what you saw 20 years ago. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, you were originally a mid-level Democrat. You were very heavily invested in the Democrat Party. And as you spoke to uh, Alex Jones about your motivation for getting involved with this, uh, you had some interesting things that you saw at the 1996 Democrat Convention in Chicago that uh, I want to uh, go into. Uh, thank you so much for what you did. But tell us a little bit about what you saw at the 1996 convention. Well, I was uh, elected as a, um, the fifth congressional district delegate uh, out of the fifth congressional district uh, in the state of Colorado. And I also was working as the executive director of the El Paso County Democratic Party. And I was also being paid by the Colorado State Democratic Party uh, through the Democratic National Committee. Uh, I started, uh, all of this in 1994, working on Dick Freeze's attorney general campaign. We ran for attorney general in Colorado. And then in 1996, um, I got out of the Army in 92. And then in 96, when I was going to college at University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, I was uh, chosen to become the executive director of the El Paso County Democratic Party. And then I ended up um, going through the Democratic uh, Leadership Council the state of Colorado, going around the state, learning about all these different things. Then I was also trained uh, to be a uh, operative uh, in order to uh, confront Republicans at debates and at uh, town halls, and also uh, to, to go out and uh, to be a field operative and conduct basically war against the Republican Party. So you're invested in this, and I've got to say that when I just went to the uh, most recent, the 2016 uh, Democrat convention up in Philadelphia, most of the people that I talked to, and, and there were exceptions, but most of them had bought into this party loyalty so heavily that they had blinders on about everything, about the email scandals, about other issues and so forth. Uh, but tell us what you saw that changed you at this uh, 1996 convention. Right. So basically, um, I was rooming uh, at the... Um I believe the Park Hyatt in downtown Chicago by the water tower. And my roommates, uh, one was the um, chairman of the El Paso County Democratic Party. And he was also a national a Democratic National Committee delegate. And, uh, and the other person was a, uh, uh, he worked as a Senate uh, congressional, uh, as a senatorial aide for Tim Worth, who ended up working, um, he was the senator from Colorado and he ended up working for the Clinton administration. Uh, basically, uh, when I went to the convention, the first thing I saw was uh, Hillary Clinton standing outside of the United Center, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and she's all, hi, it's Hillary. You know, I can't wait to see you guys. I'll be inside soon. And I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and then she thought the mic or she thought the, the, the feed was cut. And she went from, see you soon. And then three seconds later, after she thought the feed was cut, she turned to a bipolar rage and goes, take this effing mic and threw it right at the guy's face. <laughs> Hammerman. They're right at his face. And then the whole crowd like went quiet for 10 minutes in shock over what they saw. Yeah, she's got a public face it, and a it, private it, face. And we've heard this over and over again. From it disappeared. The... It's gone. Yeah. And, you know, it's gone. It disappeared. 
Yeah, it, then, we've heard this over and over again from the uh, Secret Service agents that protected her. The abuse that she uh, levels at everybody, even those who who put their lives at risk to protect her life, she throws that kind of abuse at. It wasn't that she was having a bad day. This is a pattern of behavior we hear over and over again. Yeah, it was 20 years ago. So, you know, I mean, being the mainstream media has been covering this up the whole time. I mean, right here is a, right this book, Mainstream Media, the temporary role of delegates and alternatives to the Democrat National Convention in 1996. But all the, all the people you can interview for all this stuff is in this book. Hmm. It's in the book. Well, you saw some things with Bill Clinton as well, didn't you? Oh, it, you know, I saw I saw the most sickest um, display of um, uh, of sexual predator and groping and touching and molesting I've ever seen, and it was all in public view at a closed door event in a ballroom wow. on August thirtieth, the day after his nomination speech. Wow! Wow! And tell tell us what he did. Well, I, I was invited guest of the uh, uh, of the um, the DNC uh, delegate because each DNC member uh, was allowed to take one guest into this ballroom. It was a closed door event, but I believe there was media there. There, you know, they had their cameras all up, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we're standing there, we're waiting, and then uh, there's this woman in a wheelchair like behind the crowd, and I was standing next to Reverend Jesse Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. And so he. He like pushed all these people, and they were they were pissed. But he put a, he put a, pushed all. He goes, you need to stand back and let this woman in the wheelchair to the front of the receiving line. And so he he pushed her in the wheelchair to the front of the receiving line, right? And she he put her there, and then she said he said Reverend Jackson said something I'll never forget. He said, "Watch his hands, <laughs> watch his hands." And she he's talking about the president of the United States, wow. Bill Clinton, telling this woman in a wheelchair. To watch his hands. Wow. So then Bill Clinton comes out, right? And he's groping, fondling, touching. I mean, he's he's like he's like grabbing every every woman that was on the executive committee <laughs> in his book. They're all on the stage with Governor Bill Richardson, Donald Fowler, Christopher with Senator Chris Dodd, everybody. They're all they're all in the book, mainstream media. You could interview them. And he's like groping, falling, touching, just like grabbing deep down. This guy, this guy was a sexual predator gone wild from the time Dick Morris was taken down in the tabloids and had to resign until uh, Matt Drudge brought out Monica Lewinsky. This guy was crazy, and the mainstream media covered it all up. You know, that's so the interesting he's thing. He's like grabbing everybody, grabbing everybody. He's like nonstop. He's like, nobody can touch me. Nobody can yeah. touch me. And you have people, you have people like Jesse Jackson, and everybody knows that this is what he's doing. The people in that room see what's going on, and it was even people like Ken Starr. I remember when they did the impeachment process. I mean, they had a long list of things. They had Whitewater. They had cattle futures. They got Travelgate, misuse of the FBI, serial rape. And what does Ken Starr focus on? He focuses on consensual sex with an intern, and that's what he came after. That's what he got. A couple of minor charges. Perjury and obstruction of justice, and then they didn't even really prosecute that when they went to the Senate trial. That's how Bill Clinton got off. And we then see that uh, Ken Starr goes on to defend uh, pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, also friend of Bill, uh, who Bill's taken all these Lolita flights with. Got a sweetheart deal for Jeffrey Epstein, Ken Starr did. Then he goes on to become uh, the chancellor and the president of a Christian university, Baylor, and covers up for the football players with a rape scandal there. This is how this works. Both the Democrats and Republicans at the top are in on this, aren't they? Uh, I, I, you know what? I got after after this ninety six after the ninety six cycle. Uh, you know, I was in the army for uh, seven years, and I'm a service connected uh, uh, disabled veteran uh, in the uh, from the United States Army. So I went ahead and completed my mission and completed the cycle. But after that, I was basically like done. You know, I yeah. mean, it's so sick what's going on. You know, these Republicans and Democrats, there's no political parties. That, you know, there's just labels, man. Everybody, you know, everybody, everybody's just using labels. We've only got about and, uh, 50, 50 seconds it. or so, uh, Richard. How, how do you feel about appeal. Donald Trump? Huh? I want, I, I want to make an appeal to some. I want to make sure. an appeal to Reverend Jackson. Reverend Jesse Jackson. These people destroyed your personal life by exposing your love child. 
They put your son, another great person, Jesse Jackson Jr., in federal prison for campaign funds. They destroyed your family. Mm -hmm. Reverend Jackson, you need to come out and, and help all these disheartened, broken hearts that are on these streets in the United States, the people that have no hope and no chance. And once this, once this demonic woman gets elected, she's going to destroy all our lives. Reverend Jesse Jackson, please come out and help us. Many people at the top need to check their consciences and need to speak out plainly about this corruption because it is in both parties, as you've seen, uh, Richard Jarrett. Thank you so much for what you did. Thank you for standing up. Well, that's it for tonight's news. Join us again tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern for the InfoWars Nightly News.